Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm recording off a new iPhone today. I picked up the iPhone 13 Pro Max um, and I can't actually see the screen as I'm talking to you. So I'm hoping that it is going to focus okay. Um, the last couple of videos I recorded, it was focusing really weird. So I'm going to have to check my settings. Um, but hopefully this all comes out nice and clear for you guys. So I have had a few requests to show you guys how I use Distress Inks in my colouring books. Your Distress Inks are actually really versatile. Now I mostly use mine uh, for backgrounds, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. And I will discuss some tips and tricks for when you are using this medium for your backgrounds as well. So firstly, I'm going to talk you through my beloved cloud background and how to get cute fluffy clouds with a seamless application. Um, and how to place your clouds in a random pattern on your page for maximum effect. Then I'm going to talk you through how to create a smooth three color blend for a background as well. So next is the tools you are going to need. So the cloud stencil I'll be using today is linked in my Amazon store down in the video description. And this is it here. I also use a variety of blender tools. Now, this case is from uh, from the brand Craft 2 and this one was recommended to me um, by Kylie, one of the lovely admins in our Facebook group and I purchased, purchased it online from an Australian website which I'll pop the link um, either up there or down there. Um, so some of the tools came in the set but others I purchased separately from Amazon. The applicators and the sponge tips you can purchase um, on their own from Amazon. You don't need this um, set or this case. Um, I use the flat tip sponges. Now these sponges are a great size to fit underneath the mini inks. Let me grab one. If you purchase some um, cheap Velcro dots, you can actually attach a, a sponge tip to the bottom of each ink pad. And this way you have a separate sponge for each ink and there's no cross contaminations of colors too. So that is my next purchase so I store my um, inks in stacks of three as it's how they fit in my drawer inserts my dividers but I will show you inside my drawers in another video so we have these larger applicators here and then we have some medium ones here but we also have these little sticks. Now the little sticks can help to get into small areas just keep in mind to use less ink as the pads are super soft uh, much more soft than these ones here. Um, so if you use too much ink or too much pressure, they will end up um, leaving small dark circles on your page. Unless that's the effect you are after because you can use your inks to create a bokeh background effect as well. So we also have... Oh, one second, I'm going to try and get in my drawers. Wrong drawer, Karen. Where are they? So we also have these brush applicators here, which as you can see come in all different sizes, including these teeny tiny brushes to get into small places. Um, I also like to use these for applying pastels on my page as well. Now, if you're going to be doing a background first, I do recommend using a masking fluid to cover the colourable elements on the page first. Keep them clean and free of ink. Now, uh, let me grab mine. So, I quite like using my Molotow pump marker. And one of the great things about this marker is that it is refillable. You just need a thin layer and it rubs off quite cleanly with your finger. This is also linked down below in my Amazon store too. And of course, the most important tool is the medium itself. So I buy the mini distress inks, mostly because they fit perfectly into my drawer inserts. But in my opinion, it doesn't matter if you purchase the normal size or the mini sized distress inks. I do have both either work just fine. When they start to dry out, you can re-ink the pads. Um, let me grab my re-inkers. creaking and groaning just like me okay so the re-inkers come with an eyedropper and you just take a dropper full 
and then you use it in an up and down motion like a wave so you would drop it out going up and down like that across your ink pad if it's really dried out it will absorb the ink super fast and then just add a little bit more but usually one dropper is plenty um, on the mini distress inks okay so first we will work on clouds now clouds in your book don't have to be blue you can make them any color you want to fit your color scheme i've done dark stormy um, gray clouds in worlds within worlds i mean you could make them purple for a spooky page um, or say pink if you're doing an all pink page any color really you can even mix and match for a sunrise uh, by using blues oranges and yellows and things like that so all up to your imagination let me just put these away I have to move my light to get into my drawers and yesterday it fell on the back of my head <laughs> I'm much more careful now I'm a bit of a klutz so it could very well happen again now let me just grab my Worlds Within Worlds and show you some of the completed pages. Okay, so can you see that? Yep. All right, so we have this double page here, which was completed using um, grey clowns. And then somewhere back here, here we go here's a double page completed with a blue clouds as well um, and like I said you can use any color to fit your um, color scheme as well now the reason I like this cloud stencil is because it is plastic so you can make your own stencils with paper if you do this I recommend laminating them or covering them with um, like a clear masking tape now, the reason I say that is because when we start inking, we are going to start with the tool on the plastic and blend outwards. So if you're using paper, then some of the ink will be absorbed into the paper. Now, that's okay if you're happy with doing that, but it can waste some ink. Um, if you have a paint palette like the Caran d'Ache palette, you can use that to wipe off any excess instead before you push off from the stencil with the ink if you're using a paper stencil. Um, just to preserve your ink a little bit longer and so there's not so much wastage but the less ink you put on your um, pad the less you're going to waste anyway so um, when it comes to ink less is more you can always add more color if it's needed but you can't take it away so dab your applicator less times to pick up less ink your newer ink pads will pick up more ink than older ones or more used ink pads when we are inking we're going to move the applicator in a circular motion quite similar to when um, coloring with a pencil and you're going to touch the paper softly at first and this will give you an idea of how much ink you have on your applicator now, as you can see from the clouds on my page, I don't use this stencil in um, a continuous straight line. We want to mimic clouds as much as possible, and it would be quite rare to see a whole bunch of clouds exactly the same in a row. Um, you will have ink on your stencil as well, so don't turn it over without wiping it clean first, or you will get ink smudges on your page. Um, then we want to make random patterns, or I guess semi-random, as <laughs> so we're going to be moving this stencil around to make sure each cloud um, is appearing different on the page so now let's color some clouds on this page and I will um, demonstrate it to you I'm just going to use this piece of cardstock here and I'm going to use broken china one of my favorite blues so we're going to grab our stencil now what I meant before about continuous straight line, we're not going to just do this down the page. The effect that I want, I mean, you can do that. There is no right or wrong way to do it. This is just the way I like to do it. And I'm going to go across the page here, make sure I'm covering both corners. And I have not long re-inked this pad, so I'm just going to touch it a couple of times. And then I'm going to put it on the plastic. And I'm going to go up in a very soft circular motion. So I'm barely touching the page just to see um, how much ink I've got on there. And if I need to add more. Yeah, definitely need to add more. 
There we go. And see how there's ink on my plastic? I can then reuse that ink and smudge it upwards. Make sure I get all the corners. Oops, and now I'm moving my stencil. And again, I'm not applying a hard pressure. Um, it's probably medium pressure at this point. And circular motions. And there's our first cloud. Now I'm going to go across here. And what I want to do is match this corner up here with another cloud. So I'm going to go up because it's a very straight edge. I'm going to go around like this. Can you hear my puppy sneezing? Can't believe he's three months today. Three months? Yeah, he's three months already. Oh, he's crying. I might have to go grab him. One second, I'll just go grab him. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Now, where were we? Um, next cloud, I'm going to cross over from this corner. Like that. And again, on my plastic and gently out. Circular motions. Okay, our next cloud. I'm going to go from here down. And you can see I keep turning the stencil round and round because I don't want the same pattern to continue down the page. Actually, I'm going to go from there. Yeah. And I'm just using some of that excess blue that's on the stencil to push up onto the paper. Um, I want to do that. No. We are going to do So you can make these as random as you like. I'll just try and get each sort of cloud to try and match up a little bit. So I've matched this big arch here up to that small one there. And I'm going to match that one there. No, I'm going to go like that. Follow the curve. Now, if you're doing a sunrise or a sunset, you could use, say, if the sunrise was in the center of the page, you could um, add a bit of yellow 
bit of orange, even pinks, to the centre. See, that matches that quite a lot. Do I want to change it up? No, that matches. So, let's go this way first. Very indecisive here. Do I want to make a big cloud? Big one? Yeah, let's make a big one. I knew that was going to happen. I'm trying to hold it a bit higher. Okay. And I'm going to go straight from there to there. Oh, jeez. I need to hold it down. There. Try not to get my fingers in your way, so I apologise. But I need to hold the paper still. And I'm going to do one last little bit just here to finish it off. Okay, there is our cloud background. Now, if you have any questions about this or if there's anything I didn't discuss, um, then please feel free to ask me any questions down below. And now we're going to demonstrate a three color blend. Um, okay, so I just finished a page using Distress Inks in a purple to blue ombre effect um, to create a night sky, but I don't think I can show you that page yet as a book might not be released by the time this video goes up so what else can I show you um, okay so put this the ink all over my fingers let me just wipe this down with my little paint rag here that I need to wash just so there's no distress ink left behind before I put my um, other work down on top. So these are just the Clara Markova, I believe, in fairy postcards. And, okay, so this is not an ombre effect, but it is a three-colour blend to create a smooth background. Um, what else have I got? Okay, so I've also got this Lulu Mayo page I can show you. This is from A Million Cats. Um, now my big dog's barking. Oh, he's okay. Um, the grass is another three color blend. So it's a smooth blend again, not an ombre, but it has a few light and dark patches to show a small amount of depth in the grass. Um, okay, and this one, second I've got a page here from the beauty of horror book that's 
the very last page, I think. Yeah, okay. So this one has two different purples and then a sort of bluish purple, like a periwinkle colour, um, with the darkest colour ringing around the flowers. Then it branches out lighter in both directions. This is just a way of creating a circular background, which will have the centre as the focal point. Um, so just a different way of colouring backgrounds there. Now, I know I have another tri-blend ombre effect um, for a page background, but I can't for the life of me remember what book it's in. Anyway, I'm going to show you. So... <laughs> What I'm going to do is pick three colours to blend together on a little piece of cardstock. I'm just going to use this small piece so I'm not wasting too much ink. Um, and we're going to start with our lightest colour all over and then we're going to add in the darker shades from there. So what I'm going to be using is Tumbled Glass as our lightest colour, Salvaged Patina, which is one of the newer colours, I think, um, is going to be our middle gradient. And our darkest colour will be Evergreen Bow. Okay. And I've just got my three different um, applicator tools here. What's going on with this one? A little bit bent. Okay, so we're going to go from light to darkest. And um, instead of grabbing a scrap paper to wipe off on, I'm actually going to use the back of my cloud stencil so I'm not wasting ink, just to dab it on. Don't need that one. Okay, so tumble glass, our lightest colour. I think I need to refill this one, so I might have to press a little bit firmer. I'm just going to, just in case... Okay, I'm gonna, yeah, needs reinking. I think I need to buy a, re, a new reinker for this one. This is another um, cloud favorite color. Let's see how far I can make this go. So, um, like when I color a pencil background, I'm still doing circular motions, but it's quite large circles. banging noise you can hear in the background that's my cattle doggies um chasing off some birds they're trying to nest under my um awning downstairs he jumps up and tries to chase them away he doesn't try to catch them he's not hurting anyone he's just um chasing them away oh i should have ring this one first it's going to take forever Now, because this one is so dried up, I am using heavy pressure right now. And if you were doing this in your book, just make sure you lay a bit of paper underneath so you can get right to the edges without getting any colour on any other pages. And you can also lay a sheet of paper on the opposite page, whatever side that might be, so you can go right to the edge of the page without getting the page beside it. Write myself a note after this to buy a re-inker for this colour. I'm pressing so firmly that it's hurting my hands. I'm gripping it like this. And once we've got this colour all over...
Now we are layering this, so don't worry if it's not 100% smooth just yet. Now, depending on the effect you want, what we're going to do today is go from darkest to lightest, top to bottom, but you can do it um, around the edges. So you'd go this middle colour around all the edges in a little bit, and then a darker one just on the very edges. But we're going to go top to bottom. Okay, I'll just put that aside because we probably will use it again. And salvage patina is next. Now, I don't know how much ink I've got on this one. I'm coming in about halfway down. Circular motions. And because it's not super inky, I'm using medium pressure. If it was super inky, I would dab it off and use light pressure. Let's bring it down a little bit further so we can have room for our darkest color. You don't have to use three colours. Um, two colours work just as well. So you could just leave it as is. I guess it depends on what you're colouring and how much depth of colour you want to it as well. And of course, you don't have to colour the entire background. You can leave the centre white like I did in Beauty of Horror. These are beautiful colours to use for a um, nice like tropical water background. If you've got a big water space. And you can, um, once you put your distress inks down, you can use them as a base. And then use your pencils over the top to add um, shading. So Evergreen Bow is our darkest colour. And I'm just going to put this on the top. Okay, I've got ink on my finger. So this one looks like it's quite well inked. Yeah, look at that. So, and then I'm going to take that back up. I'm using light pressure here. You can start to see the gradient coming through. And you can layer these as much as you need to. Like I said, you can keep adding, you just can't take away. Okay, that's our darkest colour. I'm just going to go back in with Salvage Patina again. And this time I'm putting um the applicator on the darkest color and bringing it down so you know when we blend a pencil we um or when i'm blending a pencil i go really dark and really heavy pressure at the top so um you can't see any tooth of the paper and then i slowly release the pencil so it's less pressure until i'm ba barely touching the paper so we're going to do the same thing from the top not hard pressure though we're just going to start from the darkest color and bring it down so we don't have a big um like blob or circle from the lighter colour. So start from the top and bring your way down. And that just helps with the seamless blend. Okay. 
Okay, and I'm just going to go back over oops, with the tumble glass, if I can get any more out. Is that my tumble glass applicator? It is. And from the medium colour, I'm going to bring it down. Now over the edges here, I am just doing an up and down motion, but I do that once most of the ink is already rubbed off, otherwise you'll get lines. So from the top down and then over the edges. Okay, oops. I'm trying not to get my fingers in your way. Okay, so I think that's all I'm going to be able to get out of here. Definitely needs re-inking. So I think I'm going to leave that there as our little ombre um, blend. Like I said, that'll look really nice for an ocean. And you know what you can also do? I do have a wave stencil somewhere, but I don't have it close by so I do have another stencil close by okay not a wave stencil but this is like paint paint splatters paint splatters so what you could do once you've got your background complete um, for example if this was ocean I would use a wave stencil and pop it over the top and then you'd get what other color you wanted to use over the top a darker blue um, black white even um, and then just using your applicator go over the top and you can make little patterns on top of your background as well um <clears throat> so yeah waves would be really cute um white waves would actually look really nice i think picket fence is one of the lightest colors um and that would look good you can also use the um distress ink um the paint splatters what do they call them uh, spray stains so this is picket fence in the spray stain and you can spray that to um, splatter on the background as well for a paint splatter effect. So lots of different things that you can do. I hope this video was helpful and I hope um, that it showed you how to get um, the Distress ink on smooth. I think I need to go wash my fingers. I've got Winker Stella on my finger. Oh, it's a little bit on my, a little bit on my um, stencil. Um, so I'm going to go clean up and wash my hands. Um, I hope that you found this video helpful. Um, let me know down below and let me know if you put these techniques to use as well. Um, if there's anything else you'd like me to show you, please also let me know down below in the uh, comment section. And thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely day. Bye for now.